So hi everyone, let me present to you the summary of the webinar about the infraorbital holo. The summary of this anatomy is very clear. We have a tear trough because the muscle, the orbicularis oculi muscle, sticks to the bone, medial to the sooth. And you have also the tear trough ligaments at the same area. If we are looking to the palpebomalar groove, it's totally different. It's because our infraorbital fat compartments disappear from the top to the bottom. And moreover, with the aging process, the bone is going backwards, increasing the depression, and the skin is becoming thinner. If we are looking in this area about the anatomical danger, we know that there is the angular artery, a branch of the fascial artery, in the nasogigal groove going along the side of the nose. And now let me introduce Francesco with a summary of this technique. We have view a technique dedicated to the treatment of the infraorbital region, specifically the tear trough and the orbital malar hollow that may call together the eyelid cheek junction. This is the first point of injection, the G point, then I go to the orbital contour padding. There's a three points, lateral. Then there is the, the center, the apex of the V deformity is three vertical. And then we have medial three points. So this is my baseline algorithm for the treatment of the infraorbital region. The G point is a specific point where I want to use a specific G prime and achieve a stretching of the facial ligaments there that stretches the tissue here. So I really achieve a lift instead of filling. So here is my entry point. Then the cannula is a 20 G. A 50 millimeter long cannula that glides under the superficial dermis. It's a very simple gliding plane that is virtually painless to the patient. Then when I'm here, I make sure I'm very deep. I'm injecting with RHA4, which I find extremely indicated for this treatment because it has enough G prime and at the same time has enough stretch to be used in a very dynamic area as the infraorbital area with the orbicularis muscle. So again, I slide superficial, then I pass and go above the orbital rim. So here, I always find the resistance of the orbital retaining ligament. And I want to pass that resistance with my cannula. It's very easy to do so laterally. Here, I will deliver half of a bolus at this lateral point. So I did this first two points, then I go to the third, again past the orbital retaining ligament, right there, you see where the tip of my cannula is above, then I stop, then I deliver half of a bolus, so 0 0.05 right here. Then I go to the uh, apex of the V deformity, where I do the same thing, glide superficial, by doing so I pass above superficial to the infraorbital artery, so totally safe but then past the orbital retaining ligament right there below the orbital rim because I can feel it with my non-dominant hand I deliver 0 0.02 of product on the uppermost point then 0 0.05 right at the apex and then 0 0.1 a macro bolus down below to provide support at the top of the tear trap right there you see where I will be delivering my final bolus right there. I come here from the G-point entry 
here laterally, right there, I will enter and slide the cannula on the periosteum. Then I slide under the orbicularis. And as I see, I pass again the orbital retaining ligament as I go down. I'm in the cheek now. So I enter the eye side and exit cheek side. And I deliver retrogradely microboluses of red density to across the defect. And as I so, do so, I climb up towards the tear trap. This is to deliver as a, in a bridging technique, minimal amounts of products across the defect. 